Hi everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. So we're going to talk about chains and specifically uh, chain sharpening tonight. Uh, if you go back on my channel, what, two, maybe three years ago? Can't remember now. But roughly that, that time period, uh, I did a video on, uh, I think it's titled, Why I Prefer a Chain Grinder. And of course, out of all the videos on my channel, unfortunately, well, maybe unfortunately, I, I don't know, it has the most hits. And it probably has the most uh, negative comments or disagree, uh, comments that disagree with, with some of the things I, I said in the video. And... There have been times that I have probably overgeneralized and maybe stated something too strongly. I think that's human nature. Uh, I'm trying quite hard not to do that uh, moving forward. Uh, all it takes is one person pointing out, Hey dude, did you think about this before you opened your mouth? And you go, ooh, okay, fine. You're right. But there's a number of people, uh, and probably one notable one, uh, that's out uh, out on YouTube that has probably as strong or stronger opinions than I do on, on many things, uh, but specifically chain sharpening. A new video went up a week ago, maybe, and uh, it was dispelling the notion of uh, counting your file strokes. You never need to worry about it. Put it out of your head. You don't need to do it. And if you sharpen a chain exactly the way that that youtuber does it that's true you, you don't need to worry about counting your file strokes however if you miss any one step in that process and you start having uneven length teeth on your chain you're going to have a problem when you're cutting you're gonna either not cut well it's not gonna cut straight uh, if you've ever rocked dulled one side of a chain and not the other, and yeah, it does happen. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. You start your cut nice and straight, and just you know, you can't even get through the cut because it's binding on the saw on the bar. Uh, so again, there's there's a lot of people who whose premise is you don't need to worry. You can have you know uneven length teeth. It's going to cut straight if you do this right. And they're 100% correct. That is absolutely true. But there's a number of reasons why I personally am not a big fan of having one tooth that has, you know, that much meat left and then the rest of the chain being new. First place, as teeth wear down, they become vulnerable to breakage. And uh, anybody who's cut real dry hardwood, oak, madrone, uh, God, what do you guys got back east? What, Osage, uh, Black Locust, things like that. Really, you know, it's ironwood, basically, when it dries out. You can break a smaller, a tooth that's been filed back a ways. You can break it off uh, quite easily. Uh, so, again, it's all in your, your, uh, your personal preference and, you know, how you want to go about it. But I try to present some stuff that's... For the casual, maybe that's the wrong term, but average user, uh, most people when they go out in the woods aren't taking a giant box of crap like I have. Let's see if I can even get this up here. Oh, shoot. That wooden box that's right back there, that some bitch weighs damn near 50 pounds. I got so much trash in it. Extra chains and grease guns and bar oil and files and you know repair links for broken cables and all of that I'd be willing to bet that not most people aren't gonna you know do that uh, but I cut a lot of firewood and it annoys me not to have what I need when I'm out there but I'll tell you what I don't have while I'm out there because I don't want to deal with it and that is depth gauges and there's a bunch of different types. This is probably the one that people are most familiar with. It fits over two teeth. And then what's sticking up in the middle is what you should file down. So literally it just sits on top. Now that's a piece of factory stock, never been used chain that was at the end of a roll. And you can see 
that there's just a smidge nubbin sticking up right there. So if you were to hit that with a flat file, it would come off with probably one stroke. Okay, cool. Again, how many folks have that in their box? The other style that's championed a lot, and I agree it is a much better style, are these Husqvarna style. And they even have a setting for soft and hardwood. And that just slips over the chain, over your raker gauge, down over the chain. Trying to do this without it in the vise is next to impossible. I'm not sure I got the right pitch there. Good lord. There we go. But it slips over. You index it. And then again, what's sticking up is what you're going to file off. Now on a softwood setting, this isn't sitting 100% straight, but you can see you're going to take some more off right there. Softwood setting. Again, how many boxes have these? I don't know. I'm asking that question. I honestly don't know. In the comments on this video, if, if you carry this kind of stuff out with you to the woods, uh, cool. You know, maybe my premise is wrong that you know there's more of these floating around than I thought. I do have files. Everybody has seen, I would hope, if you're running a saw, you've got files. Don't pay the shop every time you need to sharpen. It, it's not worth it because they're not going to do as good a job as you're going to do. At least not in most cases. This is a stock home light, se uh, 730 seconds file. You can see it has marks in there. That's the angle of the tooth as you're setting it on your tooth. You want that to line up with the outer edge. Like, you know, line it up. So this is old school. You know, that's your only line. And depth is mostly controlled by you. The angle under there will help control how deep you cut into the tooth. What I consider the more common and probably more versatile, the Oregon style. You got more marks on there. You got different angles. For those of you that want to play with your angles a little bit, I do. Uh, there are a number of times that chains don't get run with what that laser mark is, uh, especially if it's 3 8 uh, regular, you know, 3 8 uh, chain. I like to run a 25 degree angle. I've tried the 30. I don't think it cuts as good. I don't think it holds an edge as long. There's pros and cons. Again, personal opinion. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying it's nice to have, if you're going to hand file one of these things, it has a few different angles on there for you to compare to. This one's also cool because these this wide plate means, as you're filing, it's riding across the top of the tooth and the top of your depth gauge there. Controls how deep you're going to go down into the tooth. Again, that factory chain, you can see it has a nice little C-shaped hook right there. And that is what you want. Now, it's possible to take the wrong size file or file too deep to where you're actually not filing this top plate appropriately. You can get too steep of an angle on it or cut so deep that you're not actually filing the very top edge, which is your cutting edge. And that's what's going to chisel in, and then this outer edge right here is what clears the side of the cut out. So if they're not both right, it's not going to cut for crap. So, let's see here. I've got a 404 chain in the vise. It's not mounted to a saw. So we'll see how well this goes. Let me get the camera down and see if I can get the viewfinder where it'll work for me. There we go. All right. So let's see. How much detail are you guys getting? That might be enough. I'm going to bust this zip tie loose. Okay, so this is probably an average chain. It's a chipper chain. The teeth are different lengths. 
get that into the view. That tooth right there is clearly a different length than this one. This side of the chain is fairly uniformly filed further down. Now again, the pr uh, discussion that's out there says, who cares? That's okay. And that's true. Assuming that when I put this depth gauge on, I have the same amount of tooth sticking up there as I do when I put it on this one. And I had to use the same. There we go. Now I'm looking at this and I'm telling you, it's not the same. It's close, but it's not the same. So again, we'll bounce you guys around because I don't have multiple cameras. Make these shots uh, that clean. Bear with me here. All right. So we'll look at that tooth. That stupid muffler covers blowing the autofocus. That tooth right there versus that tooth right there. We'll compare those two. But you can see, short, long, short, long. Who knows why? Doesn't really matter. It is what it is. So, we're going to use that setting, which would be the soft wood setting. All right, see how much is sticking up there? Quite a little bit. So if I ground this down to the soft wood setting, this chain would get a hell of a lot more aggressive. See how much is sticking up there? Hardly. I mean, it's there. Right there. Right there. It's different. Now, is it enough difference to be a massive problem? Probably not. But if you file four or five times and never adjust that, or you just take a rough swipe with a flat file and guess at it, it's going to get that bad. So, to make this chain work right, Let's take this down. And I'm going to use the hard setting here. Oh, no, I won't. I won't be lazy. I'll file it as much as I need to. Look at how many strokes for the flat file this has taken. There. And yes, that's a new file. So I'm not pissing in the wind here. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that would get more aggressive real quick. So there. See a nice shiny edge. So we did that one, and we did that one. So see the difference. So doing it like that, after you have filed with your round file you can have any length tooth you want all the way around and it will cut straight and it'll cut as aggressive as the chain is designed to cut the question I have and I know the answer for myself is do I want to do this 
when I'm out in the woods? And I, again, I know that answer for myself. No, I don't. So what I want to do, if I've caused a problem with my chain out in the woods, Alright, see this tooth, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is another good point. If you don't have your grinding wheel set up right and you sharpen it on a grinder, going from round file to grinding wheel can be interesting. See, that's, that's just incredible. I haven't even begun to touch the gullet of this. Barely even coming down. So that's how much meat you've got to take off after you've lowered that depth gauge just to even start coming back. And I'm definitely getting good depth because it's cutting way down into the drive link right there. Boy, I would hate running this chain. Be horrible. Would not be a good cutter. Be good for cutting roots and crap. Anything that was dirty, you know, if it bark was full of dirt and rocks and junk, would be a good chain for that. Okay, well, that's incredible that it took that much to get most of a C shape back there. It's not even a C-shape that I'm happy with. This tooth is worn back far enough. So if I'm out in the woods and I've rocked it and I've got to take that much material off, at that point, you're done with that. Now you've got to come back with your depth gauge because you wouldn't have done it first. That'd be silly. But we took enough off and then we're going to do this again. Okay, so now that might actually cut worth a crap. Might. I'd say that shape of that tooth is terrible. But if, if you go with the I'm not going to count my strokes method and you're out in the woods, this is what you're going to have to do to sharpen the chain. Now, granted, this has been for demonstration purposes and this isn't, you know, necessarily real world conditions. But how long did we just spend on that? Plus, this is mounted in a vise. How many of you have a vise out in the woods? Now, I bought a stump vise where you take a, a mallet, maul, whatever, and you pound the, the vise into a stump, and it's got a set screw to hold your bar. Pretty good. It works pretty well. But I can tell you, like this, this is a full comp chain. 36 inch bar, full comp chain. By the time you get through one side of this bloody chain, you're going to be pretty tired of it. The last thing you're going to want to do is go back through and lower these depth gauges. So all of this is just building up to the fact that there's more than one way to skin a cat. Now you've got to maintain your depth gauges, but out in the woods isn't where I want to do it. I'd rather do it here in the shop where I've got this vice. And I'd rather have just sharpened, if I've got a pretty messed up chain, I'd rather throw it on my grinder, clean it up, and then come over here and do those depth gauges. Now you could do, you know, just a hand file. Doesn't matter. If you don't have a grinder, that's no big deal. I didn't for a great many years. It's just I sharpened enough chain now that it made sense to get one. But if I'm out in the woods, here's what I want to do. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. That's a made up number. It could be one stroke to clean it up. But eight has that nice and sharp. 
If I've maintained the chain previously, and eight strokes is going to clean up the rest of these teeth, which I know it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How hard is that? It's not. It's not hard at all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hell, I can even take a drink of uh, beer here in the, you know, in the interim. You're going to know where you started. Because when you get back to a shiny cut tooth, you know you're done. So is that the only way to do it? No, of course not. Is it an easy way to deal with it when you're out in the field? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it'll save you time because you're not going to be dinking around with the depth gauges. If all you need to do is a touch-up, you don't need to lower the depth gauges every single time. But even with an eight stroke like this, could I pull, you know, if I did another eight strokes out on this tooth, could, uh, yeah, I could pull another three or four swipes off the file. But that means I'm going to go through the chain and go through it again. And that's going to take, again, on a bar this size, out in the woods, if you don't have a stump vise, ha ha ha, yeah. I've seen the method where people, you know, they say, they lean, here's the power head right here, and they lean over it, and they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're leaning over, and they're filing like this, and switching off. I guess if you're ambidextrous, cool. I, I'm not, I'll be honest, my left hand is not going to do as good a job guiding the file on the one side as it is on the other. And that's another way you end up with uneven length teeth. It's natural. You've got one dominant arm. And just You're going to push a little harder. So, anyway, there's a case for counting your strokes. There's a time and a place for it that it actually makes, in my mind, really good sense. And it can save you a little bit of frustration of, you know, maintaining your chain when you're out in the woods. When you're here in the shop, you got a cold beer, you got everything you need, that's when you want to mess with these depth gauges. You don't want to do it when you're out on the day of cutting. So if you have to sharpen three times in a given day because you're cutting some really dirty wood, you know, really sandy with rocks in an oak tree, something like that, once again, you're going to spend more time dinking around, playing with depth gauges, and trying to get all of these these rakers, depth gauges, whatever you want to call them, knocked down to match every tooth that's a little bit different. So if the chain's not horribly messed up, and you just need to do a touch-up, if you do it an even number of strokes, just saying, it's a little bit easier. So the other, other thing that gets talked about is, is there a relation to the length of your tooth versus how it cuts as to whether it'll cut on an angle, cut smooth, cut rough? And I've heard it stated, no, the length of your tooth does not matter. And that's not true. It does matter. It matters in conjunction with a number of other things on your chain, all of which are going to dictate how it cuts. The length of the tooth matters because it relates to the height of your depth gauge. A properly maintained depth gauge that is matched to the tooth means that you're right. The, the tooth length does not matter if those two are working together. That tooth, right there, I have filed it with the round file, which is good as it's going to get on this style of chain with how worn it is. And then that, that depth gauge has been filed down to a soft setting. You can see there's a good height mismatch there. It's going to be an aggressive cut, super aggressive cut. That one, the depth gauge has not been adjusted. And look at how much higher it is to the top of the, 
the distance between the top of the depth gauge and the top of the tooth is far greater than on that one. So what is that going to mean? That one's going to cut a much smaller, less aggressive wood chip, and that one's going to try and rip the heart right out of the tree. That one's going to go for broke. That one's going to be like, meh, all right, here I am. So it all works together, and that's not all. You've got your top plate angle. That top plate angle, you see how there's an angle. That's the top plate angle right there. How aggressive, you know, how sharp or blunt that is, is also going to determine how the chain attacks the wood. A more sharp, angled chisel is going to cut faster. It's going to cut a bigger wood chip, but it's going to be more prone to breakage and damage. A blunter angle is going to hold its edge a little bit longer. It's going to be less prone to damage, but it's not going to cut as fast. Now, you can control that angle with how deep you let your round file go on a grinder. You can control it by changing the angle of the head. You can see I'm running 55 degrees. Some chains vary. I have found personally that is an angle I like. It cuts well. It holds an edge long enough as a, if I don't do something stupid like bury it in the dirt or try to cut concrete holds an edge pretty good. So that angle matters. The other thing that matters is how deep you cut down into the gullet. Now if you're not down basically to that depth right there, you're too high. It's going to blunt that edge, but it's also going to alter how it runs through the kerf. The kerf is the, the cut. This edge right here has to sever wood to clear for the bar to go through there. The main cutting's done right there, but you're going to sever part of the chip with that outer edge right there. So you, that edge is going to be incorrect angle, incorrect depth, incorrect shape if you're not getting your file deep enough or your grinding wheel isn't contoured properly. So. Does the length of the tooth by itself matter? No. But when you put it in the context of all of these things, yeah, it sure does. Because that tooth, super long, super high, not going to be aggressive. Going to be aggressive. So let's say that you're a, a casual user. You buy a chain, you sharpen it when you need to. You never touch these depth gauges, which I'm going to say a huge number of casual users don't. So say that you're, again, right-hand dominant. You're the person that's been filing this chain. And that tooth is worn quite a ways back. And that tooth isn't worn quite as, way, oh, quite as far back. You can see it. If I put a mic on this, it would be less than a sixteenth of an inch, but it, it's significant. You can see the difference. If you never touch the raker gauges, ever, on this chain, and you tried to cut with a tooth mismatch like that, every bloody cut is going to be crooked. And the more you file, the worse it's going to get. The more wear there is, you know, and whether you're taking a sixty-fourth of an inch more off of one side than the other every time you file, if you file ten times, all of a sudden, what's that come out to? What, five thirty seconds? Can that be right? Yeah, it is. That's huge! That's huge! That's a huge amount of material. More on one side than the other. So again, it's all on how you're going to maintain it. The length of the tooth does matter. It matters in a great many ways. Match it all up. That tooth, with all the work that's been done on it, the fact that it's smaller than that one, doesn't matter. 
because they both have had their depth gauges adjusted appropriately. If you are not the person who files your depth gauges regularly, the length of the tooth matters. Counting your file strokes matters. If you have a drawer full of this stuff, all the flat files and depth gauge tools and all this other stuff, if you got that drawer, nah, you can file those teeth to a million different lengths if you want. You're going to follow it up with those. So it's all in perspective. In my quest to not be overly broad and general and conclusive on things, I'm going to say that's my argument for why counting file strokes can matter. It's all about what you're willing to do, how much time you're willing to spend, where you're spending that time. Is it in the woods? Is it in the shop? But I'm not going to buy into a broad statement that counting your file strokes doesn't matter because in some cases it clearly does. <laughs> All right, so there it is, my opinion. It's not worth much of anything. You can't buy a cup of coffee with it. Hell, you ain't even going to get your chain sharpened with it unless you mail the damn thing to me. So, say, I have uh, been doing this for quite a while. Filed a lot of chains, sharpened a lot of chains screwed the pooch on a number of chains. There are mistakes I've made, my goodness, trying to learn to uh, to square, f uh, to grind, to hand file a square grind. <laughs> yeah, I've <laughs> made a couple chains garbage. But he, shit, when I was a 14 year old kid filing chains, I mean, damn certain I made mistakes. Look, tried to learn from them. Don't want to make them again. <sighs> but I want to present options. And uh, before anybody decides to completely flame this video in the opinion or the comments, you know, I'm sure there'll, there'll be somebody who comes in and, you know, refers me to somebody else's channel as the, the real source of information. Cool. I am not pretending to be the only source of information. But I know there's 3,000 some people that are subscribed to this channel that I think might be interested in this and that's why I do my videos I post them because I think it's gonna help somebody or the people who've already found the channel might be interested in in seeing something so there it is that's the follow-up to why I prefer a chain grinder why I think tooth length matters in some cases have a good one folks